Hello there! Welcome to Astro Reader PH and thanks for dropping by for some astrology. So this video is about the astrological updates for the week of November 22nd to 28th for all signs. This week we have this sort of theme of crossing the bridge and holding our breath. It's because we're in between eclipses right now. In between a lunar eclipse in Taurus on November 19th and the solar eclipse in Sagittarius on December 4th. So while it we're in between these eclipses, there's some sort of transitional energy going on right now that will help usher in this, these changes that the eclipse season is trying to bring. We may be experiencing these changes or turning of tides uh, related to the eclipses. So, as I said, we just had this lunar eclipse on November 19th in Taurus. So, how was your lunar eclipse? I hope it went well. Maybe it started a conflict or an ending for you that will take about 6 to 12 weeks to process. So, it's not an instantaneous letting go or an instantaneous ending. But you will be feeling this urge as early as now. If you missed my video on that lunar eclipse, check it out here where I go deeper into it and discuss its effects on each sign. Um, for our first update, we're still in this void period that I've been talking about for the past few weeks. This is just a reminder that we're still in this um, void and unstable period in between or right before eclipses until December 4th as I said. So it would be best to avoid starting major projects or life events during this time because their chances of success are much reduced. As I mentioned in my past videos, it's better to use this time by wrapping up projects instead of beginning them, especially when it comes to activities that are relating to business, study, documents, writing projects, or communication projects, or skill-related projects. Basically, Mercury ruled our Gemini-related projects. This is because Gemini was the last solar eclipse in June 2021, and this eclipse of Gemini is wrapping up right now, or concluding its effects right now. So Mercury and Gemini also tends to be quite busy and focused on the here and now. So we're wrapping up these busy activities now as well, which is why you may feel like there's a lot going on right now. In short, it's best not to put too much expectation on the outcomes of the things that you do now because of this void period. However, sometimes this period works very well for casual experimentation when no intentions are invested in our actions. So we could get these eureka moments from nowhere. But then again, don't start these major plans or activities until after the eclipse season. So it's okay to have these unexpressed intentions during these void periods, but don't manifest them yet. Or don't do any overt acts that will transfer them from your imagination into reality. So if you're planning on doing something, just keep it in your mind for now and don't do anything about it just yet. Because once you put these, this intention into reality, the astrological energies will begin to imprint at the moment that you commence these activities. So... You don't want this kind of energy of the void period imprinting on your activities right now. It's still better to wait for more appropriate or effective astrological times, like after the eclipses. But even if we're in a void period, there are still some astrological energies that are running this period. Uh, for one, the T-squares that I've been talking about for the past few weeks, they're done. Finally, the Saturn Apex T-square is gone, it's broken, 
And the Jupiter T-square apex, as I said last week, paved the way for more freedom. So as I said in the last video, there's this element of feeling free or breaking free right now from something, from restrictions perhaps, or suffering or pressure. And there's this sort of return to reason and ideals. This is due to the T-square formed by the lunar eclipse with Jupiter as its apex. So Jupiter was really empowered by that eclipse, causing these energies of freedom to burst through. Um, additionally, this three-week-long T-square with Saturn as its apex, as I said, is now broken. So the restrictions, pressures, responsibilities, and red tape, they're beginning to dissolve. But these T-squares are still in sign, so the residual energy will still be there until the last planet in Scorpio moves to Sagittarius on around mid-December, I think. But the peak, at least, is over now, and the relief should begin to flow through right now. And if you have Leo planets or important Leo placements that suffered under these T-squares, you may gradually start feeling some relief around this time onward. Why Leo, you ask? Because the apex of these T-squares was in Aquarius. So it was facing away from Leo, and thus Leo energy would have drastically suffered the past three weeks. Leo energy may have been neglected. We can also look into the house of Leo in our chart and see the area of our life that's probably been neglected. So if you have Leo in your fourth house, it may have been your home, your personal life, your well-being, or your family. But then again, the worst is over for it right now. As I said, there's more energies for freedom. The sun is entering Sagittarius this week on November 22nd. It's so we're moving away from Scorpio energy. The dark, secretive, and taboo kind of energy. Sun is the first planet in Sagittarius. So... The change is gradual and just beginning. The planets are now making a gradual transition from Scorpio energy to Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius energy relates to ideals, freedom, truth, law, philosophy, culture, art, uh, long-term visions, teaching, among others. So Sagittarius energy will be pivotal in the coming months because of the upcoming solar eclipse in Sagittarius on December 4th. So this solar eclipse will emphasize the need for freedom, truth, morality, returning to our ideals. So if you have significant Sagittarius placements that suffered in the past 5-6 to six months, um, just hang on because they will probably be restored by this eclipse. A solar eclipse is quite empowering, especially for the sign that it's in. So I'll be making this separate video on that. Before I move on, uh, I would like to ask you to please like and subscribe to my new channel. Uh, that really helps. Thanks. So Mercury is moving to Sagittarius on November 25 as well. It's the second Sagittarius planet, except for the moon, of course. What this means is that Mercury will be void before that. Um, from the beginning of the week on November 22nd until November 25th. So a planet goes void or void of course when it finishes the last aspect to another planet or point while it's still in a sign until it moves on to the next sign. So the effect of a void of course planet would be like a fog that like there could be so much uncertainty during those times and uh, results don't usually come out as expected. Now, not many astrologers track void planets beyond the moon, but I do. This time, we're going to have Mercury going void. And when Mercury is void, it's best to be careful with your commitments and your activities, especially when it relates to communications, logistics, 
documents, plans, or day-to-day -day tasks, or tools or technology, or work-related things. We could be overthinking or being busy right now with no clear end goal. And after Mercury moves to the next sign, we may find that the activities done during the void didn't really materialize as intended. That said, these astrological void periods are great for casual experimentation. We could strike some breakthrough moments from apparently nowhere. Oh, but still, this is a period to watch out for. And finally, rest and relief is coming soon. As I've been uh, looking forward for to for the past few weeks. Um, Neptune is going direct next week, finally. And Sagittarius energy will also bring free time for us to be able to reflect, appreciate culture, and focus on spirituality more. Um, combined, that means that we're going to have a little more free time and rest and leisure time over the coming weeks. Because of these combined Neptune and Sagittarius energies. So this week is sort of like a calm before the storm energy in the sense that it precedes a huge eventful period next week because of the solar eclipse next week. And solar eclipses are huge changes that mark new beginnings or major turnings of the tide. So we have a huge week next week. So stay tuned, okay? I'll see you next week then. Thanks for watching. The astrological updates for all signs for the week of November 22nd to 28th. Um, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Goodbye.